When Mandakini was discovered in the other palace Pender Sculpture Hall, the Emperor and the Prime Minister were having a heated argument. As soon as Malayaman's daughter left there, Prime Minister Anuradha said, King Puruma. I said that certain things should not be said when women are present. Now they must be said. The dangers of Veera Pandian are still lurking in this country. They are waiting for the right moment to fulfill their cruel vow. Isn't this anything new? Is it news I already know? That's the reason why the scumbags have put up such a strong defense against me," said the emperor with a sneer. They knew about the bailouts. But they couldn't have known that the conspirators were getting material support from the treasury of the Chola kingdom itself," said the prime minister. Ah! What a myth! said Sundara Kalar. I have to tell you some more wonderful tales than this. Fresh gold coins from the treasure dungeon of the great Pula Vetareya were heaped among the danger-stricken crowd. Here is the seer disciple Tirumala. He will tell you about it in detail if you work. There is no need, those who have sacrificed their lives and shed blood for the Chola clan for generations are corrupt. Even if Arakandra comes and tells me that they are paying gold coins from my treasury to the group that is plotting to kill me, I will not believe it. Forgive me, I do not charge the traitors with such treachery. May the conspirators have gold coins from our coffers without their knowledge. How can that be? Can Yaman die without knowing, what? If Yaman is marrying a young woman in the old age, that too may be possible, O king. I don't like the fact that the great rascal got married in this way. I told him that. I can't bear to accuse him of infidelity like this. Emperor. I do not charge the traitor with treason. I charge the younger queen he married. You can at least put up with the blame on the boys. I hate you for putting the blame on a wretched woman. No matter how sad it is, I have to tell you some truths about the young queen of Palvur. Once I was so upset that I didn't tell you a truth at the right time. You were also angry a while ago. So you have to listen a little more patiently. The emperor smiled at these eloquent words of the prime minister. He said, You are binding me with my word. That is my own business. It has nothing to do with this. But tell me, I am listening. The younger queen Nandini Devi came to the palace of Palyavar three years ago. Since then some magicians have been visiting the palace of Palyavur. This is known to Chinapalyavatere. He also does not like the presence of magicians. But he does not have the courage to speak against Tamayanur. Brothers, this is how it should be. Should not the kingdom be harmed by brotherly faith? Now what harm has come to the kingdom? Will the kingdom be ruined because a ghostly woman called some magicians and asked them to cast a spell? Are you saying that the young queen of Palvur cast a spell that made me ill? Emperor. I suspect that those who come to see the young queen of Pavu are not really witches. They are conspirators who claim to be witches. I also suspect that the material is being stolen from our treasury through them. Do you have any taste for suspecting anything or anyone? King Mana. If we raid the palace and treasure dungeon of the great evil doer today, maybe we'll get a treat. No one has ever said anything more dear to me than this. Anirida. You are my only friend. Palyavetare was a lifelong friend to three generations of Chola emperors before me. He was like an iron shield to the Chola clan and like Indra's Vajrayata to the enemies of the Cholas. Would you raid such a man's house in his absence? I would rather believe that the daughter of Malay Amon gives me medicine as a cure than to believe that he is giving space to conspirators in the palace. Emperor. This is not happening without the knowledge of the Palyavatare. The Palyavatare, who is blinded by passion, does not know what is happening in front of him. Unbeknownst to him, his palace has been the headquarters of the conspirators. There is reason to believe that the young queen of Pavuvar is one of the conspirators. What more slander are you going to say about that ghost girl? A few days ago, a crowning ceremony took place at midnight near the school of Prithivapati in Tirapurambayam forest. A five-year-old boy was seated on a throne and crowned as Pandya king. Those who participated in this crowning ceremony vowed to exterminate the Chola clan. Prime Minister 
Do you intend to frighten me with this news? Did you expect my limbs to tremble? No, Emperor, no. I did not mean the jest. I wanted to tell you that the younger Queen of Palvur was among the conspirators who took such vows. Who was the wise man who saw all this from near and told them? There stands their excellent disciple, is he. After everything was done, he went there. He was a god who came from the monkey clan. You mean the one who came here once and ran away? He is not alone, Lord. His son is a close friend of Aditha Kari Kalar. Kari Kalan has many such intimate friends. One will not say what another says. Let what he says be true. There is nothing that can be done about it now. The great Palyavatare is not here, nor is his younger queen. We can inquire after their return. First Minister. Tell me about the younger queen of Palyavur. I myself became curious to see such a wonderful woman. I had told her not to bring her in front of me because of the disgust I felt when she brought her in marriage. That's why she might be angry with me or something. When the great Pulvatere came back this time, he brought his younger queen and her I'm going to get rid of my anger. Emperor. That is what I want. There are more important reasons to appease Nandini Devi's anger. Until Nandini arrives, the Queen of Elam should be allowed to stay in our palace. Aga, you have crowned her as the Queen of Elam, haven't you? Let her go, what has she got to do with the Queen of Pavur? That is what we need to find out, Lord. If the two meet face to face, perhaps the connection will be revealed. Nandini Devi's enmity against the Chola clan may change. Minister. It's surprising that you care so much about a woman's enmity. There is reason to worry about Nandini Devi's enmity. I fear it would be inappropriate to say so. Who else can tell me what you hesitate to tell me? Tell me without hesitation, said the Emperor. The Prime Minister thought for a while and said. O oh King! What I am going to say now is a very complicated matter. It cannot be convenient for you. Yet listen with patience. All who have seen Nandini Devi and Mandakini Devi marvel at the similarity of their appearances. There are so many wonders in the world. Like a tree there is another tree. Like a madman there is another madman. But one tree does not walk disguised as another tree. One madman does not come as the spirit of another madman and kiss the emperor. What do you mean, Prime Minister? You have been tormented by thinking that the spirit of Goddess Mandakini is haunting you at night. Are you saying that her spirit did not come, she did? No, no, I say the young queen of Palvur must have pretended to be Mandakini's spirit and have indulged themselves. Sundara Chola sat up a bit, furious, and said, If what you're saying is true, strangle that Rakshasi with my own hand. The Prime Minister interrupted, No, Emperor. Don't make such a vow with your mouth. He said excitedly. Why? Why are they so kind to her? What can they do to her who has tormented me so far? Said Sundara Chola. No matter how much he has suffered, if the person who has caused him is a close friend, perhaps his own son. Said the Prime Minister and hesitated. Prime Minister. What madness is this? Said Sundara Kalar. Emperor. I have really tested their patience. Give me the befitting punishment for that. But don't talk about punishing Nandini Devi. Nandini Devi is not only the youngest queen of Tahanathakari Palyavatarayar, she is the daughter of Sundara Chola Emperor of the Three Worlds. Who can punish her for what crime? Said Aniruthapramarayar. On hearing this, the Emperor stared at the Prime Minister for a while with immense astonishment. Then he smiled saying Kalir. Emperor. Today is very good. I heard you laugh twice, said Anuradhar. Brahmaraya. I thought there was now a madwoman in this palace. Now I know that you are a greater madman than she. She is a dumb madman who does not speak, you are a madman who speaks. After saying that, Sundara Chola thought again and smiled. 